Today's Gospel is a continuation of uh, yesterday's Gospel with the story of the two that were on their way to Emmaus and then Jesus is walking with them and then as they are sitting down at table he breaks the bread and disappears from their sight and they run back and they tell they start to tell the disciples what happened but they say Peter saw him he's alive and then they recount how they'd come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread and immediately Jesus appears to them and says peace be with you and they're startled and they think they're seeing a ghost after Peter saw him after the two of them saw them and saw him and were breaking bread with him it's like they, they think they're seeing a ghost how can this not be the same Jesus they just saw but in any case uh, since none of us have had this experience, we can't exactly go along with them and say, well, I would have done better. But I, I want to notice, or what I noticed rather, I want, to, I want to bring to your attention is Jesus' first words when he appears to them. Peace be with you. And in fact, this Sunday's Gospel, um, which has two different resurrection appearances from John. First is in the upper room, uh, with the eleven, with the ten disciples, and then the next week has Thomas joining them. Um, three times in that short passage, when Jesus appears to them, he says, "Peace be with you." In another part of John, Jesus says, "Not as the world gives, do I give you this peace." And I think about this time when. You know, maybe we're stuck in our homes. Maybe we can't go out and do the things we want to do. Maybe we're stuck waiting in line outside the supermarket as they're only letting a certain number of people in. We have to wait and wait and wait. <clears throat> we, we may be looking for some way to find peace. And so often we go to the world's understanding of peace. Uh, I think about pieces that the world gives is kind of like that uh, movement of the squiggly line on an EKG. You know, ding, it's, it's a blip. It's, it's there. It's quick. It gives you peace quickly, and, but it doesn't go deep and it doesn't go long. Where Jesus' peace is more like, I see, is like this long dive that goes deep, 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 and lasts. The reason why we don't go to Jesus' peace, which is lasting, first, is because it's not usually immediate. There's not a, that immediate gratification, there's not that immediate peace when we're looking, when we're feeling empty, when we're needing that peace. And so we go to the things that will give us immediate peace, whether that be alcohol or drugs, whether that be pornography or just spending time on Facebook or Instagram or, or YouTube or whatever else we're doing to keep our minds from having to deal with the chaos and the emptiness of this moment. We go to that which will numb us at least for this moment. Unfortunately, the moment after, we've lost that peace. So we go for something more. We look for something more. The blip doesn't go any deeper, though. And doesn't last any longer. And so we have to look and say, what will give me peace after that moment? Will I have to endure maybe for a little while the turmoil, the emptiness, the longing, the whatever? Yeah, maybe. But deeper and longer will be the peace of Christ. And Jesus says, I want to give you peace. Peace be with you. It's his first words to us so often when he sees us. Peace, shalom, wholeness be with you. So we have to make that choice. And it's so easy, especially when we're spending all of our time trying to find some sort of peace in a screen or, 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 or other ways. We have to look and say, no, I'm going to put those down. And it's going to be maybe hard to be in silence for a moment. 
may be hard to seek out God because it's not going to be immediate gratification. But, event, but it will be a lasting and a good peace.